Lu and his companions accept a contract to assassinate the corrupt nobles assisting a slave auction. During this time, a flashback of his previous life shows he was training a rookie while simultaneously taking out members of a crime syndicate. As they tried to escape, the assassin and the rookie were intercepted by a drone, which forced them to improvise in order to avoid it. As day broke, the assassin contacted the organization where he announced his intent to retire and become a mentor to future assassins in Japan. Using fake passports, the assassin and the rookie reached a nearby airport and took flight to Japan. Unfortunately, their plane was attacked by a fighter jet deployed by the organization and the assassin realized that he had been set up. Once the assassin died, he encountered a goddess who gave him a choice, be reborn as a completely different person or accept her request and be reborn with his memories intact. The goddess wanted the assassin to take the second choice because she needed him to kill the hero of another world. The assassin agreed to kill the hero simply because he wanted to experience the happiness he could not have in his previous life due to him suppressing his emotions. The goddess allowed him to choose special powers and abilities, but warned him that he only had 18 years after his birth to kill the hero before the hero brought chaos into the world. She also told him that there was a slim possibility he could save the world without actually having to kill the hero. He is then reborn as a child of the Tuatha Da family, a noble house of assassins. As Lu begins his new life, he becomes an expert hunter and cook, and his physical growth is examined by his father, who concludes that Lu is ready for a special surgery that will give him the ability to perceive magic in a person or an environment. Lu successfully obtains the mystical eyes passed down to the Tuatha Da family and his father promises to teach Lu how to perform the surgery when the time comes. He also finds a magic teacher for Lu, named Dia Via Kohn. In attempt to measure Lu's magical potential, Dia gives him a far stone, a special gemstone that can measure a person's magic capacity. Lu's power is so vast, however, that the far stone ends up exploding. This gives Lu the idea of using far stones as makeshift grenades. Over the following weeks, Dia and Lu become emotionally attached to each other. Lu proves to be an exceptionally fast learner, not only learning how to synthesize metals, but also how to create weapons. He and Dia even learn how to create new spells together, and on their last night together, he gives her a titanium knife as thanks for being his teacher, while she gives him her personal far stone. As Dia departs, Lu's father decides that it is time for Lu to assassinate someone for the first time while explaining the methods of the House of Tuatha Da. His victim is a woman guilty of multiple crimes who tries to plead innocence. But Lu, knowing that the woman is lying, kills her painlessly. Using his mana vision, Lu attempts to find someone who can be both his personal servant and his assistant during assassinations. Sure enough, Lu finds such a person in the form of Tarte, a girl from a poor background who had made her way to the Tuatha Da region in hopes for a better life. After rescuing her from a pack of wolves, Lu brings Tarte to his home and gets permission from his father to train her as an assassin. When he reaches the age of 12, Lu finds that Tarte has become very skilled in spear fighting, but has trouble using smaller weapons like knives. To solve this problem, Lu creates a special, retractable spear that Tarte can hide beneath her clothes. With a good weapon at her disposal, Lu believes Tarte has become a valuable asset in his mission to kill the hero. Lu has produced a large collection of far stones thanks to the spells Dia taught him and reports to his father, revealing that all this time he has been observing Tarte and can say with full confidence that she is not a spy from a rival region. Lu's father tells him that it is time for Lu to face him in combat in order to prove he is ready to perform assassinations. Despite Lu's youth and experience from his previous life, Cyan proves to be a formidable opponent. Afterwards, Lu joins Cyan in performing assassinations and Cyan tells him that in order to facilitate his work, Lu will have to assume a fake identity as a member of the Baylor trading family. Cyan holds a party to celebrate Lu's ascension as heir to the house of Tuatha Da. Rona, a member from a branch family, disagrees with the decision and challenges Lu to a duel, but he is easily defeated. Even so, Lu gives him a special sword so that Rona can continue his training as a knight. 
The next morning, Lu and Tarta depart and begin their journey to the Baylor region. As Lu and Tarta begin their lives in the Baylor region, Maha and her friends work hard to make a living in the merchant town Miltu. Unfortunately, they are captured by a group of bandits and taken to an orphanage, which turns out to be a front for a prostitution ring. There, all the girls except Maha are forced into prostitution under the heel of the local noble, which deeply traumatizes them and even causes one of them, Noin, to scar her own face with a sickle if it means not having to work as a prostitute. Two years pass, and Maha, upon knowing that she is next in line and was about to do the same thing as Noin, is eventually found by Lu, under the alias of Illig Baylor. However, before Lu can buy her, the director of the orphanage tells him he must wait three days. Fortunately, Lu saves Maha and with Tarte's help, he is able to expose the noble's crimes and get him arrested. As the prostitution ring is shut down, Noin finds that her scars have been healed and Maha finds a new home with Lu. As Lu continues his life as Elig Baylor, he comes up with the idea of opening a cosmetics shop in Mill 2 in order to both increase profits for the Baylor family and fund his assassination duties. He also introduces lotions, moisturizers, and sweets to the new world, giving his shop, Orna, a massive boost in sales and a huge advantage in the market in only six months after its opening. However, spies hired by rival businesses attempt to infiltrate Lu's home to discover the secrets of his success. With the help of Tarte and Maha, Lu captures at least one spy, but is unable to gain any useful information from him, even when subjecting him to torture. As his business grows, Lu temporarily leaves Mil2 and visits Dia in order to increase his magical knowledge. To his own surprise, he discovers he ejaculated while Maha and Tarte slept alongside him, implying that Wu is starting to see his partners as more than just pawns. Having established a prosperous business in Mill 2, Wu decides to return home and continue his training as an assassin. He leaves Maha in charge of Orna, knowing that she plans to expand the business into other regions, and promises he will come to visit. On their way home, Lu and Tarte are attacked by a pack of wolves, but Tarte easily kills them and Lu observes that monster attacks on human settlements have become more frequent, suspecting that the hero will show up soon. Upon his return, Lu is summoned to his father's study, where Cyan gives him the choice to give up on the life of an assassin and instead live peacefully as a merchant. Cyan has become too old to do something else with his life, but Wu is still free to choose his own path. However, Wu chooses to remain in his current lifestyle, admitting that he has fallen in love with Dia, and he will not be able to marry her if he does not possess the privileges of the Alvin Kingdom's aristocracy. Accepting his son's choice, Cyan gives Wu his first target as a fully trained assassin. Wu's first target as a fully trained assassin is Count Asba Venkar an aristocrat who has been selling military secrets to neighboring kingdoms in exchange for Visine, a drug that he distributes throughout the kingdom. Using Maha's information network, Wu decides to investigate the Count by himself and determine whether or not the target truly deserves assassination. Lu and Tarte visit Pazir, the second largest merchant town in the kingdom, and take down a criminal group selling Visine but not before seeing the effects of the drug on a poor girl's mother. Sometime later, Lu and Maha travel to Count's mansion under the pretense of selling Orna's products, which proves to be a success for Orna. As night falls, Lu silently assassinates Count Venkar with his newest weapon, a sniper rifle, but takes the time to watch the grieving wife's reaction. While Lu does not regret taking the Count's life, he promises never to forget this particular mission as it was the first assassination he performed as a free man, rather than as an unfeeling tool. Lu and Tarte spend a full month on a deserted island as part of their assassin training, and upon returning to the mainland, Maha gives them information about a divine treasure, a tool of immeasurable power that Lu has been trying to purchase for some time. This divine treasure, a magical spear called Gabolg, is in possession of Satanta Magnus a renowned warrior suspected to become the legendary hero. Lu also discovers that the Viacone region is involved in a war and rushes to Dia's house, 
offering her a way to escape should the war reach her doorstep. Dia refuses to abandon her home, stating her obligations to her family and her people. Even so, Lou and Dia decide to enjoy themselves on a date. As Lou returns home, he still thinks he can help Dia escape from the war, but Dia has already taken steps to defend herself by fortifying her hometown. Sometime later, a wounded soldier asks the Tuatha Dé family to assassinate Dia. Cyan explains that it was Dia's father who ordered the assassination on his own daughter as an attempt to stop the civil war currently afflicting the Viacone region. Since the Tuatha Dé family has always had the option to reject missions depending on their interests, Lu realizes that Dia's death will ultimately fail to stop the war and deduces he can use this mission to save Dia. Tarte, acknowledging Lu's feelings for Dia, helps him reach the Viacone region in a way that helps him conserve his magical energy. And Lu finds that the Viacone region mansion is under siege, but is able to make his way to Dia while keeping casualties to a minimum. Meanwhile, Maha's information network has gathered information on the divine treasure Lu has been looking for and Maha decides to relay her findings to Lu immediately. Lu and Dia's father come up with a plan to fake Dia's death and safely sneak her to the Tuatha Dé region. Unfortunately, the arrival of Satanta Magnus thwarts the plan before they can enact it. As Satanta is the wielder of the Gaybolg, Lu knows that he will not survive a direct confrontation with him. So he fires a magnetically propelled tungsten projectile into the atmosphere and stalls Satanta long enough for it to obliterate him. Afterwards, the Tuatha Dé family adopts Dia under the guise of being Lu's younger sister, completing the mission. Sometime later, Lu receives word that the hero, Lord Epina Rhiannon, has arrived in the Alvin Kingdom. And that's the end of the video! Let me know what you think down in the comments section below. Don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button while you're at it, and as always, I'll see you in the next one. Ja ne!